welcome back to my channel. I'm JC and today's video is going to be another Preptober planning video. Um, part one of my outlining process. I know so many of you guys have been interested in how I outline and it's been hard for me to detail what my outlining process is because it's not the same for every book. Sometimes I can use Save the Cat, well parts of Save the Cat. Sometimes I just use a simple basic three-act three act structure. Sometimes I use the um, the snowflake method. Um, other times I've used the plot embryo in the past. Um, most of the time what I really end up doing is kind of combining a, lots of different methods together to form a method that works for me. But this particular book, I was actually able... Okay, it, it took a while, <laughs> but I used all of Save the Cat. Um, I don't know how, but because I couldn't, for some reason, book one, two, and three, I couldn't make it work, the Save the Cat beats, like, in its entirety. Like, I could make some beats work, but the other ones I couldn't. And there were a couple of beats I did struggle on <laughs> for book four, but I actually got um, a skeletal... Skeletal outline. I'll call it a skeletal outline because I do detailed outlines as you guys know So this is the this is why this is part one because this is only like the first part of my outlining process so this is save the cat beats of my story and um, I Will put some clips here. Um, I got some ideas even though I did mainly use the save the cat beats I did Take some ideas from Abby Emmons' um, simple outline. Basically, I cover four areas here. Who, what, how, and why. The characters, the plot, the journey, and the theme. So first, who are the characters? What are their internal conflicts and their misbeliefs? Why do they each have individual reasons for being a part of this story? What is the basic premise of the story? If you had only 30 seconds to tell someone what this story is about, how would you describe it? How are these characters going to go on an internal and external journey? What are they going to learn and how are they going to transform as a result? Why are you passionate about this story's theme? What is the truth you want to shout from the rooftops? What are some big ideas you want to explore through your character's journey? I took some inspiration from that as well but um just you know I've mainly used the save the cat and I went to Jessica Brody's channel she has a channel here on all the on YouTube and this is Jessica Brody's channel where I sometimes when I'm getting get real stuck on how to make the beats fit for save the cat because they don't always fit for my books um I'll go here and she has different videos that break down the beat sheets and different parts of the beat sheets because I'll be honest some of them I had a hard time trying to make fit for my story as I did with books one two and three but I was actually able to make them work and it was really actually helpful um to and I was kind of filming bits and pieces of this video, which also helped. Um, I didn't actually film the parts where I was talking to myself. I made the mistake of not hitting record by accident. I thought I did, but I didn't. But um, I managed to get all 15 beats. Some of them I have to go back over and tighten up a bit more. So I'm, I don't want to give away everything. So I'm not going to share the entirety of all the beats. Um, I did want to share that. Um, okay, so my catalyst is going to be when Regina, when Regina's mother comes to Mackenzie. And at first it's just that Regina's missing and no one knows where she is. And then Regina's body is obviously going to turn up. And they realize that this goes deeper than just some local missing girls um, who got lured in by some social media app 
by, you know, some unsuspecting random individual. It'll be more linked to the cartel um, when Regina gets thrown in the mix. So that is what I deemed as the catalyst. And so one of the things that in the initial process of me brainstorming everything, I didn't come up with like an ish, a personal issue that Mackenzie was working through um, because she's an investigative reporter. And I'm like, well, she's working on a story. Like, of course, it's an emotional story. So, of course, it's going to get to her because, you know, you're looking for missing girls. It ends up being tied to a sex trafficking ring. Who wouldn't get emotionally involved in that? But I didn't really think about having a personal flaw or um, some personal lesson that she was supposed to be learning throughout this, which I know is a part of the Save the Cat Beats, which is one of the parts I struggled on because I'm like, well, this isn't really about Mackenzie and her personal growth. This is about the story she's working on and saving whatever girl is still left to save and then clearing this boy of murder charges that he's not responsible for and finding out what happened to the con well the congressman's well ends up being the congressman's daughter. So I was like, well, it's not really supposed to be about her. Like book one was about her and some personal issues. And I'm like, I didn't really maybe that's why I struggled using Save the Cat for books two and three because there was no well there was some personal struggles there but I didn't I didn't like personally throw them in the outline they arose as I wrote the book so when I went back over and I was watching the breakdown Jessica Brody was doing on the beat sheets of Saved Cat and I was like okay well the congressman could be tied to the ex in book one, who was also a congressman, who had, when they dated in college, had sexually assaulted her. Um, so she could still be dealing with the trauma from the sexual assault. And while she was seeing a therapist in book one, she was not seeing her therapist in book two or three. So there was some stopping of the therapy sessions there, which could also bring into play Maybe she's not as over the past trauma um, because in book one, because I don't think I've talked about book one, two, or three very much, but book one, um, there were repressed memories. She didn't remember being sexually assaulted. She had blocked it out until the person who had assaulted her ended up being the person she was, whose murder she was trying to investigate and who she was at one point implicated in um, because their, their ties and their links together had been discovered through the investigation and she had repressed the memory of being assaulted by him. So, you know, I, you know, so she had never dealt with it immediately after because she blocked it out. So when I get to the part in this book about well, what personal issue, so she's dealing with young girls who have been lured into this sex trafficking ring, basically being sexually assaulted. So I'm like, okay, there's my, there's my flaw. There's my, I don't want to say life lesson because, well, the lesson is she thinks she doesn't need any more help. She thinks she's past it. She thinks that she's through the trauma. She had enough therapy. She got the help she needed. Or so she thought she's done with it. She's, you know, it doesn't, bother her anymore she thinks that you know Derek the detective she's dating it's a point of contention in their relationship so I also added that in there which was not in my initial thoughts to do but I added that in there that they have a point of contention in their relationship because she always thinks she needs to go things alone and um, even though they've had this back and forth of helping one another solve the cases that they are simultaneously were linked to together you know they've had this back and forth but there's always this that that um how do i put it um there's always that innate instinct in her to just go it alone and just 
do things without telling people she's going to do them and go off and thinking she doesn't need anyone's help. Um, and in this case, she's like throwing herself into this case because missing girls, then it ends up involving a sex trafficking ring, ends up dealing with some sexual assault. So the trauma is stirred up, but she's not acknowledging that it's stirred up for her. Um, but Derek is pointing it out. Like, I think you're too close to this. I think you need to take a step back. I think you need to start seeing your therapist again. You know, that sort of thing. And um, <clears throat> she's just very stubborn, that one. <laughs> and she just thinks she's a-okay. Doesn't need any help. She's through the trauma. She's already, she's fixed herself. That's what she thinks. Um, so there is that lesson in there that I threw in there that she has to learn because she goes off and gets herself in trouble trying to um, go it alone, basically. Thinking she's moved past things and doesn't need any help. I am. I did also throw something in there that I wasn't initially planning to throw in going over the beat sheets in the, I think it's the All is Lost beats. Yes. She gets kidnapped, partly because she goes off without help. She's told from Derek to wait for help, wait for backup, essentially, even though she's not a cop. But she's gotten a lead on the person that the investigation shifts its target to. And so she's going alone, not waiting for Derek to help her, not waiting for anyone, anyone's help. She just thinks she can do it by herself. And doesn't think she needs any help. She's fine. She's completely fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> and so she gets herself caught. And she gets kidnapped. And then she comes to face to face with the congressman. Who not, I think I've mentioned before. That they've dealt with each other before. Because she, when he was up for re-election in Baltimore. Um, as a council member on a, on a city council board. She dug up some dirt. Some old things. She thought he had a link to a cartel, but she could never prove it. But she dug up some other issues that basically killed his campaign. He didn't get reelected. That's why he moved. So there's that. Um, there's that for him and her. But there's also, there's a link that's going to be between him and the other congressman in book one that she was assaulted by so it triggers things on multiple levels for her coming so she comes in the all is lost is it i think yeah all is lost dark night of the soul one of them two beats she comes face to face with him and it just stirs up all kinds of things for her and there's fun stuff in going over these beats because the reading reading saved the cat it, it does a lot. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say that it doesn't. It's very helpful. But going to her channel and actually hearing her break down the beats and explain them and go over them, I don't know. It did something extra for me, for my brain to better understand the beats. I wish I would have done it the other couple of books, um, but I didn't. So there. I, I wanted to share the beats that I struggled with um, for the... I struggled with the B story beat, um, and I struggled with the break into three. I did eventually figure them out, but it took a while um, for me to figure those beats out. And I did not entirely stick to this calendar. I mean, it's very helpful, and I'm trying to like make up for some of the things on the calendar that I've missed thus far, but. I have not stuck true to the calendar. Um, I've missed some things. I'm trying to catch up on some things. So the next video is probably going to be part two, which is the chapter. Well, as I go over the chapter by chapter breakdown, um, which for me is going to be a little different because, like I said, I've never been able to fully use the Save the Cat beats. I've only like used. I've used a hodgepodge of outline methods before in the past so I've used a couple of the beats and then I've used some parts of a different outline method so I'm interested to see how my chapter by chapter outline is going to go this time 
having all of the beads together. I'm hoping it'll make it smoother because my chapter by chapter outline is probably the most taxing, time consuming, grueling part of outlining for me. I love it, but it always takes me the longest time to do the chapter by chapter. Probably because I don't use a cohesive outline method like to do the skeletal part of the outline. Um, the hodgepodging, eh, it's worked for me in the past, but I think it was starting to not work for me, which is why it's taken takes me so long to do the chapter by chapter, but maybe this time it'll go a little smoother now that I've managed to use all the beats. Um, and then um, I think the video after that will probably be more detail about the characters, but I did in doing the skeletal outline, I did go ahead and write down the characters that I needed for book four. Um, I think I've written out, down all the characters that I'm going to need. I can add more as I need to. But all the main basic characters, like the Mr. Phillips son, who has a name now, it's Jacob, Jacob Phillips. Um, the congressman whose name is Lewis Bradford. Um, his wife, oh, Oh, I got their their children. I got it. I got two more names I gotta come up with. Um, the son's mother, Mr. Phillips' ex-wife, um, and her new husband. Not entirely sure he's gonna actually come into the book, but I just thought it was best to include it in any way, just in case. I mean, he might. Um, and then of course the 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 cartel characters, the you know, well, the politician is the the boss. But then there's the lieutenant, the second lieutenant, and then there's his hitmen um, who are slash bodyguards. But there's those. So that's part one of my outlining process. It is the skeletal part. Um, part two is the chapter by chapter outline, which you will see next time. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. If you like what you see, and you want to see more videos from me, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button. I post videos on Mondays and Thursdays. I live stream on Wednesdays from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As per usual, if you would like to support me in any of my creative endeavors, such as my blog site, my online magazine, my online store, or my Kofi page, all of those links can be found in the description box below, along with some links to some other wonderful channels that you should check out as well. Until next time, have a blessed day. Bye.